Hey folks, it's Sunday, 8 p.m. Central European time here in beautiful Bruges, Belgium. So we must be talking photography. Welcome to Andy's Photo Show one and all and happy Christmas, happy New Year in advance, happy Kwanzaa, happy whatever holiday you're celebrating, including the end of 2020, which has been a rough one. Hope you're taking some solace in these beautiful times, my friends. It is the end of the year. We have made it and 2021 will be a bit bumpy, but if you want to blame it on a calendar, it's almost over. Let's start the show with that. Now, welcome one and all. As you know, you can leave comments and questions in the comments section of this uh, live cast. And I think we're just going to get on with things because this week we are going to be talking about Andy's here in Bruges for photography. We're going to do a review show. I'm going to go over all the photos or at least the ones I think of interest from this year of 2020 and walk you through how my life in photography has been over 2020 with a little look into Bruges over this unique year. So without further ado, I can see loads of you tuning in. Thank you. You must be bored on a Christmas to be listening to Andy. Wow. So let's get on with things with my wife in the corner giving me a look for making fun of myself, but I get there before any of you do. So that works for me. Let me just go over to Broadcasting Central and... Uh, I suppose just take a minute without the Facebook mess in the screen. Like I said, you know, Happy New Year. We're going to be talking about the year in review. I guess we can all just say it was a interesting year, to say the least. Started off fairly normal, or at least most of us thought so in that early month of January. And then it went places. Interesting, fascinating places. And I think we're going to have uh, a lot of stories to tell at the end of this year. And also, I think we're going to have some adventures and trials and tribulations next year. So I just said it, but, you know, before we get into the photo side of things, especially at this time of year where we, you know, 2020 or otherwise take stock of the year and uh, reflect on what was good about it. I want you to do that without getting too specific or nail railing on about my own stuff. Just uh, take the good out of the year. And remember, that's the bright and warm stuff that keeps us warm during these hard winter months. One of the beautiful things I think they do here in Bruges is called the warmest week. And it's actually not just in Bruges, it's a Belgian thing where this week is reminding you about mental health, happiness, you know, looking after each other, charity, all that kind of thing. There's usually some events that raise money for mental health, health and care charities which I think is a good thing. And obviously with 2020 sort of tearing our focus away from the normal, just remember to uh, look after each other in whatever way possible. Whether it's a phone call, a message, something to charity, because they can probably use it now more than ever if you have some pennies to spare. All that kind of thing makes a difference. And I guess also for just looking after each other and you know reminding uh, each other that we're there, don't forget when you're doing your shopping, especially over the January sales, if you have any money, support your local shops as much as possible. I'm no xenophobe. I believe in international love and international commerce. But in these times, you know, remember to support your local camera shop, your bits and bobs gear shop. I'm sure they can get you whatever you're looking for if they don't have it in stock or on the catalog. And, uh, you know, even if you're going to shop online to one of the bigger chains, maybe this year just add that 5% that you'd save back on and support something within your own country. Just so we all get a little strength internally so we can uh, look after each other externally over the, uh, the coming times. All right, that's my little New Year's speech. It's probably not as fascinating as the Queen's. So why don't we get over to some photos? I hope the bad jokes are better than the Queen's though. We try here. We watch the crown with splendor and glory and we can almost do some of the voices. Yes, let's get on to some photography, boys and girls. Let's start with the obvious, I think, if you've seen this show before, which is, of course, to uh, love everything in photography. Creativity, heart, and passion is one side of the coin, as I've said before and will say, say again. That side of the coin is where you're making the art and speaking from the soul right there in the core going out. That is definitely part of the love that you have to embrace and... Uh, work with if you want to get ahead in your photography. And it's the part that you can enjoy probably the most as the creative uh, 
side of you is growing, being nurtured, starving but hungry for a replenishment, whatever it is. That love, do not ignore it. It's helped me a lot in the uh, love of photography. Then, of course, the other side of the coin in the love of everything in photography is to remember the practical love, the part where you have to make the effort, where you have to maybe spend more than two minutes on the scene so you can soak it all in and get a few shots to show that. Maybe it's just waiting for somebody to get out of your way, or it's just figuring something out in the camera one way or another. That kind of love in the practical way makes a big difference. And of course, it doesn't end there. We can talk about more than 50 bucks on the camera gear so that you get to where you need to be on the technical side of things. And of course, for a trifecta on the love, you can just think about that whole fiddling around with the camera, listen, listening to tutorials, listening to me babble on for whatever inspires you and your photography. All that work is part of it. And if you are doing that, then I think you are on the right track with your photography. We got to start it with that, especially for the last show of the year. So there we are. All right, the year in review in Bruges. Let's make sure everything is working smooth. My wife over there co-piloting as our casual producer says I'm on air and everything's looking good. So yay for that. Why don't we get on to some photos of Bruges, starting with, well, we're going to go to the beginning of the year, but I think starting with the most recent proud photo moment I've had in this year of 2020. Bruges Landscapes Unlocked for Light, A Story of Space, Silence, Simplicity, is the series and photo book that you see there fresh from the printers that came out in this beautiful year of 2020. I just wanted to get that off my shoulders. It's lovely. The book came out, the series came out. You'll see some of the effects of that and some of the photos from that, of course, over this review of 2020. And uh, it feels real good that of that 100 series limited edition that we did in the hardcover way in the oversized 28 by 28 centimeters that it's selling really well and we're not losing money and we might even be running out from that 100 edition so order yours if you've been thinking about it for that cheap plug so the tax man knows i'm doing some marketing here got to put this on taxes ladies and gentlemen and before we get too deep into bruges i thought i would get out of the way some photos by others following some of the publicity and joy that I had from Bruges, um, uh, Bruges Landscapes Unlocked for Light coming out. That is an article <clears throat> from the Grand van West Vlaanderen, and it feels real nice to always get a little press when you put something out. The article is by Pete DeVille, and you can read it for yourself over at kw.be with translations and a subscription. You can get a little glance or do a screen grab and read on if you want from there. But I actually thought it would be fun to show you the uh, photos that didn't make it in this little feature that I got in the Kant van West Vlaanderen. Davy Koge, Koge, I never say your name right on air, do I, dude? He uh, is a fine local press photographer, and he was sent over, unfortunately, for him to cover this. And you can see, whoops, oh, that is totally out of order. Yep, there we go. Photo one, one that's definitely not going to make the press. It's me into the sun, and, well, I think we can do better than that, but it's a good start, if nothing else. You can see also I printed up my big board of the cover photo so that it have something for such press moments. But I actually thought... Davey really did well just getting to the uh, heart of whatever the hell Andy is. And you can see it moves around from joy to looking away joy to casual smiling joy for the camera to a little more serious to a little off center, but still working to a little oh, horizontal action and then a little full body horizontal action, which is, of course, what she said. And then. From there, thanks to that press, tell you what, I'm just going to jump out of Lightroom and rearrange this so we can do it right. There we go. Another article in our local art and culture magazine, Exit Magazine. Maybe you got a copy. It's a popular one around town. Another little article about yours truly in the series, Bruges Landscapes Unlocked for Light. And thanks to the lovely photos that... Uh, <clears throat> Marie Ellen Charlotte took, and you can follow her on Instagram. Well, I have a couple of photos of yours truly to consider for my wall of glory, or at least my personal collection of photos that don't suck of me. 
And you can see Ellen is such a nice lady that she insisted that we get a couple of photos of us as a couple. And certainly we're not going to say no when a fine photographer offers that. So we had a spontaneous little photo shoot and the wife did not mind at all. We did the whole looky looky at each other. We did the whole get ready to kissy kissy. And we did the holdy holdy, the man is pregnant kind of vibe. And then, of course, we did full on kissy kissy because you got to do full on kissy kissy if you're doing a little love shoot. <clears throat> Speaking of love shoots and getting into the current year of Bruges beyond photos of me, let me just browse around quickly to comments and all that. OK, we're looking good. This was how January started for me in Bruges, but not in the way of me proposing to the wife all over again because we did that 18 years ago. This is some of the work that I'm doing in a normal way next to my photo tour here in Bruges, where I'm a photographer in Bruges. And when, get, when couples get engaged, they sometimes contact me to get a nice little shoot, even if like this lovely duo here, it's the day after the big proposal and they just want to get together for a shoot and have some fun. And actually, that New Year's Day was what I thought was going to be the beginning of a very, very promising 2020 for work because I actually had two of those photo shoots on New Year's Day. You can see this time it was actually the big moment and the proposal, and that was nice. And of course, we have an hour when we do my portrait shoots here as Photo Tour Bruges, so we have time to wander around. And I'm not going to bore you with all the photos. This is a best of highlights for 2020. But of course, the ring has to be seen because bling, bling, bling. And some nice happy vibes also to start 2020. I mean, you can imagine for work, I'm pretty damn happy if, uh, boo, 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 by January 1st, I've done this and more on the commercial scale. And frankly, just being a portrait photographer, especially having done well over a dozen engagement or couple shoots, it's something I really enjoy. So January 1st started off really, really promising. And skipping ahead a few days and I guess making sense of this, well, an annual tradition in Bruges every year is to uh, get a little drunk on the Berg Square with a free beer as a uh, city collective. Thanks to the Halvaman Brewery and the city of Bruges, the Bergs opened up. You can see some tents there. Let's use the mouse. And yeah, in those tents and in people's hands everywhere are free beer, which is a really nice story. And part of why I've glad, I'm glad I've started this show so I can share these littler stories of Bruges beyond Instagram. And you can see it gets pretty packed. I mean, this is pre-COVID, at least as far as it hitting Europe and the West. So no masks, no concerns on social distancing. Oh, what a simpler time. And there was free beer on top of it. There's my lovely wife bringing me free beer and some lovely free Belgian cheese. Not the cheap stuff either. Bruges cheese by brand and by taste. And actually, they've upgraded the old... Uh, free beer on the Berg over the last couple of years by also throwing in fritches, which are, of course, our chips or French fries for free as you drink your beer so you can have something to cushion it. And of course, it's a chance for the politicos to run out the various cabinet members of our fine city of Bruges. I won't name them all. If you live here, I'm sure you know at least a couple of them in passing. I actually love doing event photography, and we'll be talking about that in a little bit of our year review. But you can see I certainly take the chance from going front stage to getting backstage and just messing around a little bit. I mean, this isn't working particularly uh, anything more than freelance. I don't have a paper job or anything, but luckily, I mean, you can see quite easily from getting backstage to a flat out portrait shot with the mayor. I'm lucky enough to get a little access around here. People know my photo work, either from the photo tour and landscapes or my portrait work, my street photography, my reportage from events far beyond anyone knowing I was up to that. And you can see it pays off uh, just with the chance to sort of get closer and get more intimate versions of some of the stories I'm looking at. So yeah, good start to the year with free beer and photos. Christmas sort of wrapped up from there, and you can imagine in uh, that mid-January point that we might be feeling a little bit blue with the gray weather and shifting skies. 
But luckily, unfortunately not for 21, we get the costumes in Bruges, of which I'm a proud sponsor, along with the city of Bruges, Shopping Bruges, and the Hotel Association in past years. This was one of the last public events in a big way in Bruges, funnily enough. So, you know, you can imagine it was at least a good way to see off the normal life and something that's built up over the last few years in this fine city as uh, something to cheer up January. You get some real interesting shots. And I mean, these are just a few of them. I've, I've also gone to multiple events for the costumes in Bruges. And it's just a really wonderful time. I mean, it's a little crazy and you can also photograph that and get some feeling on street photography as you, you know, go beyond the model obvious. But I really enjoy it. And I was proud to be a sponsor uh, both this last edition in 2020 as well as back in 2019. I also, having visited a few of these, and actually with access as a sponsor with one of those red jackets that gets you around a little more through the crowd, uh, I focused on the theme of looking backstage a bit, and I haven't really had a chance to talk about it, so here's a quick peek at that. It was a hectic situation, and I only got so much, but you can see just the idea already of playing with people taking photos and get photo of a photo sort of thing. That can definitely be a theme to explore, and certainly part of my create, creative mission at the beginning of the year was just to start stretching my boundaries a little bit. So that helped. And you can see, of course, with a visit to City Hall, we're going to get another chance to get Mayor DeFowl and a couple of the costumes looking suave, sexy, and good. Remember when we could all stand close together and there wasn't a mask in sight. Ah... And being a sponsor, even though my name isn't Gilson Michel, this shows you one of the passes and a little peek at one of the backstage shots that I got to get, thanks to uh, being a part of Costumes in Bruges. And I got to say, actually, not to get too sad or dwell into the tough parts of the year, but this is something I'm going to miss in January quite a lot. You know, we, uh, we've sacrificed a lot of public events and normal life over the last eight months. This one's going to hurt over this ninth month. So, moving on and also into the positive side, especially before everything flipped over and changed around March. This is the Hotel Buhonius Hof. You might all know it if you've passed it around here in the city of Bruges. It's actually very, very central. So, uh, you know, you probably passed it if you were just visiting the city and wandering around up to the market. And actually, this was part of my commercial work. Uh, again, just what I do next to my photo tours, as well as my portrait offerings as Photo Tour Bruges. You can see that I have a decent handle on architecture and other aspects of photography. But over the last few years, I've been lucky enough to get into the commercial side of things with interior photography for the hotels. Johannes over at Bohoniasov had built these brand new hotel rooms and needed something to someone to document them. And luckily I was called in. And actually, if we look carefully at the TV screen, that happens to be a Photoshop job so I can make the TV look more interesting in post-production. And if we look at the other side, as well as that photo in the TV, you'll notice if you're a longtime fan, that those are two of my photos, as well as another photo right there because that ain't Photoshop on the right. He also wanted photos for the rooms for this uh, fine new setup he had that I ended up documenting as a hotel photographer. So that felt real nice. And I also enjoyed the challenge of joy doing the Borgonius Hof. I mean, architecture photography can always be a little bit touch and go. And I can assure you there's certainly a fair bit of post-production in here to make things actually look natural and kind of you know, feeling unphotoshopped, funnily enough. But I think we got away with it, and I think it's looking pretty good and evolving. And I also had the pleasure of working with different types of rooms. You've seen the minimal white and then something a little older, and now something by the canal with boats of Bruges in the background. It's pretty fun as a commercial photographer. It's one of the things I really enjoy about hotel jobs, in fact, is just... Uh, it's really relaxed and chilled compared to the event photography. And you just kind of get given a stack of keys and told, get it done. You set up the tripod, you relax, you take some time in post-production. It's fun. 
even photographing toiletries or the bathroom itself. Oh, and hey, look at there. There's Bozo in the corner, that kind of thing. That's what you do because you're in a tight space, even with a wide angle lens. That's where you play afterwards with the old Photoshop towards deleting and removing things as you need. That's my life in photography. Hope you're enjoying it. Hope you're enjoying coat, coat rack photos. And of course, probably not enjoying that sign so much because now we're getting a little later into the year, aren't we boys and girls? Why don't I go back to the coat rack photo for just a second. I will flip over and check if there are any comments and anyone having anything to say. The best way for me to see it is, of course, if you leave a comment over on Facebook.com Andy McPhoto for the live stream. Da, 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 da. We're looking all good over on Photo Tour Bruges because we're simulcasting there, so that's all fine. Okay, but there are a few listeners and viewers, and hello. Hope you're enjoying my year in review in Bruges. It's about to go from pre-March commercial work and waiting for the season to start to uh, that thing that happened. That thing that made all the tourists disappear right at the beginning of the season here in this tourist-friendly city of Bruges. The thing that freaked us all out a little bit and suddenly we started thinking about six feet or 1.5 meters of distance. Not to mention having that distance because even the busiest corners are totally empty. Yeah, something was in the air in the beginning. It was no masks, but keep your distance. And I got John, the Waffle Man, over on the Berg Square before the big shutdown. He's chatting to one of our fine locals here. And you can see if you look at his feet and the base of his bike, that dividing line on where people have to stand and then the next distance for the next person. Early days, so no masks on that side of things. And then the official lockdown came down. I was extremely fortunate, not by a press notice, but, but just happening to be there, that I caught the mayor as he was giving uh, the official press uh, conference to, to Focus VTV, the main news network here, as Bruges went into its own regional lockdown after the national lockdown was declared. So that's a nice little moment, and uh, I was not displeased to have that, even though obviously I'm not super pleased about the situation, especially having a photo tour called Photo Tour Bruges that goes poof for business. We were going to host our first big workshop this year for Strabo Tours. Hopefully that'll happen in 21. But for now, or at least in the spring, it was all closed. Shops closed, bars closed, restaurants closed, except for takeaway, and you still can, so support your local shops, especially in the, in the catering district. But at least for photographers and for the general public at large, we were still allowed to walk around at least one hour a day in our region for exercise. <clears throat> I consider photography exercise, and I certainly talked about this, over the last few episodes of Andy's Photo Show, however, the lockdown, one hour a day, I'm exercising my photography by uh, getting out there and getting shooting. It's a good physical and mental workout, not to mention keeping me sharp as a photographer. But yeah, I wasn't the only one. And luckily we, I mean, for a, such a such a really terrible situation, and I could use other words, but I'm trying to stay clean on the live show. Uh, we, here in Bruges, at least, got to enjoy our beautiful medieval city uh, opened up and just looking like it never had, even compared to the old days. I don't think there was ever a time at uh, high noon, you know, 12 o'clock right in the middle of the day that the market square was ever so empty. Steenstrat, where loads of groups are usually passing around. Uh, not Steenstrat, Catalina Strat, excuse me. The Bonifacius Bridge, which ended up being the cover for uh, Bruges Landscapes Unlocked for Light. Filled with some chalk by kids who were hanging out because, of course, locals have a little space to play around in their own town again. And as you can see, and I mentioned, even the busiest of the tourist spots were all ours and at a certain point taking on the mask vibe but just really a space to enjoy as much as possible through such a t tough situation. 
I mean, for business owners, it certainly hasn't been an easy year, especially those of uh, my fellow colleagues in the in the tourist industry, especially who have shops, restaurants, B and Bs, hotels, costs in one way or another. You know, I mean, we travel light as Photo Tour Bruges, so we've actually been okay with turning off our costs. But at least you get your city back a little bit, and you know. We're also very lucky here in Belgium. The uh, the government worked for five minutes in spring and especially on the regional level of Flanders, lots and lots of subsidies to try and help out and cushion the blow. Should also be said in credit to, uh, you know, the people who make credit, the banks and such haven't completely suspended loans, but there has been a lot more renegotiation and moving around and suspending of loans where it is possible. And the government is also stepping in and you know, there's still work to do, and I think everybody could uh, step it up, especially on the top levels. But good to see that through this tough situation, at least we're not totally screwed. Yeah, and we tried to look after each other. You could see signs of it everywhere, even when you weren't wandering the uh, central landscapes. There was a little scheme that went around that I think popped up in a few places. So I don't know if it started here, but uh, you put a bear in your window so that school kids who aren't going to school can go around with the parents and count the bears and do a bit of a treasure hunt. That's pretty nice. Signs of support. If you lise hein flams, if you uh, don't read Flemish, that says, together we are strong. And those kind of messages, as well as just white sheets hung out to uh, signify su uh, support for the medical staff. Pretty powerful stuff. And, uh, you know, you hit along some harder moments where you see the no entry, what's going on, the emptiness of the, the space that's usually full except for a dog going, hey. But there's beauty in it. Real nice stuff in such hard, uh, hard difficult times. And we don't forget, this is towards things reopening that this actual sign popped up, but... Uh, it certainly wasn't the it certainly wasn't the first and it certainly wasn't alone. And you know, I saw some friends around here and there while keeping our social distance. I might have snapped off a photo of Lars and his lovely lady, of Paul and Benny, of Johannes and his lovely family, his clan. And I even got to see my parents over summer, at least the parents-in-law, I should say. They're like my parents as I was doing a little landscape shooting in the outskirts of Bruges. So I got to say, sit down and I'm taking your portrait. And so it was done. And of course, every now and then the wife and child joined me. The lovely wife and Blake being there was uh, certainly a nice thing, whether they joined me as I was doing some of the shooting or just were there when I went home. It's, uh, you know, the year where you decide Am I happy with my choices? To paraphrase <laughs> James Chappelle, you make these choices in life and 2020 can be a good reality check of uh, how, how those choices worked out. And I'm pretty happy with my choices. That lady right there, that dog too. And things eventually opened up towards May. There was a lot of uh, life once things were called clear, and as I think we know now, with the warm weather sort of affecting at least this particular time and moment of the strain in the virus, we got to open up, and there were certainly signs around that people were happy to have things opened up. That felt good. And, you know, eventually business got on, at least for a little while. This is where the masks become a lot more common in the photos you're going to see, but uh, at least you know, boats can go with everybody wearing masks and people keeping distance from the driver up front. And this is actually the very first boat to go out in spring uh, over from Boats in Bruges. You can see the media crew. If you look closely, there's a couple of ministers and people of various kinds. And of course, we have Mikey driving away as he does with Splendor. The horses also came back, which was a nice feeling, especially for the horses. You know, there's a, a whole discussion about animal rights and everything, and I'm not here to give that. 
But I am here to point out that with these horses on this earth, they do need exercise and things to do to keep them happy horses. And it's uh, pretty well proven with the standards here in Bruges of one day on and three days off that they don't have the worst life here, uh, especially since culturally animals are almost more important than children, especially if you got little brats. So the horses, they need their exercise and it's good that they get to go back to work in my opinion. Please don't leave a comment if you disagree or even agree. Let's just move past that. Let's get to some of the good again with the horses being around. That is the family on the left who have these particular horses. Uh, it's split between, I believe, six families for the horse life here. But in the middle, once again, we have Mayor Dir Dirk de Fowl there to announce that the horses are open and sort of get them some press and visibility. I mean, say what you will about politicians and press and all that. It does get attention to causes. And in this case, I mean, businesses that are uh, that are devastated by the by the shutdown for tourism. That's where that's where it's good to see these guys guys uh, working away. And you can see I can tell him, do you mind Mayor Defoe to give me some blue steel and he'll shoot to the camera and I'll get him without distraction or any silly stuff in my way. And switching around away from the uh, lockdown reopening and lockdown itself, I guess, you get to see a little more of my commercial work in a second for the interior and architecture. But quickly, we're going to go check on the comments and see if there's anyone saying something, saying something. Does it look like no, you're all quiet and that's fine because we have lots of photos to get through. Hope you're enjoying this year in review in Bruges on Andy's photo life side of things. This is again on the work side. This is bed and breakfast or B&B Barry Cell. It's in the uh, St. Gilles or St. Hilly's Quartier of Bruges. It was another nice little commercial uh, hire I got to do for the year. I should have added, by the way, for the job with Borhonius Hof that you saw previously, that that job stopped halfway because of the lockdown, even though we're gonna resume in future. But luckily, there were a couple of client jobs and B&B &B Barry Cell uh, stepped up to get some room photos done. But of course, before the room photos, I have to show Benny because he happened to be up there. And I said, hey, camera, click. So there you are, Benny, on Andy's photo show. And again, a quick little taste of my commercial architecture work for interiors of hotels. It works for me and it seems to work for the clients. I mean, Benny has... Uh, had me around to photograph the rooms a good three, four times at least. And people seem happy with my work, so that's kind of nice to uh, feel. But I hope you're enjoying some photos of the fine B&B Barry cell that I put together. And then we hop topics again, because I don't totally remember the order of all these photos since we have so many. And we get into a little side project I did. In fact, I'm going to hop out in Lightroom and maybe just go like this so you can see them as a collective. This was a little side project I did <clears throat> just as the reopening was really underway. And I thought of ways that I could, um, frankly, just help my community, whether it's uh, on the social side of things, whether it's on the work side of things, whether it's just covering life and trying to share some positive stories of Bruges, like I did, I think, even during the lockdown, even though you saw some uh, heavy stuff. Well, with the lockdown over, I decided to get to know a few more of my fellow guides here in Bruges. I do have since 2012, the business of doing photo tour Bruges, the number one ranked photo tour here in Bruges since 2012. And I thought what better thing could I do with some photo skill and some time on my hands, but to photograph and videograph some of my fine colleagues in uh, this fine city of Bruges. So I made it a mission. And actually, we even have more photos of that and video because this is part of a project that, because the lockdown came back in fall and tourism never really took off too big over summer, uh, I've had to delay the release of all this till summer. Yeah, my wife's sighing in the corner. It's a funny old year, isn't it, boys and girls? Keep strong, eh? really, like no joke. Keep strong up there and uh, look towards those you can uh, you can lean on. Like your fellow guides when you visit Bruges or your fellow guiding community when you have a guide tour business in Bruges. 
That is Ariel from the Beer Walk. That is Jos from Quasimundo Bike Tours. That is Hirt from Segway Tours. That is Philippe from Quasimodo Iber uh, Flanders Field Tours. And that is Pete from the beautiful Fitzkuten, which is the bicycle tour around here, bike taxi. All certified history guides too, impressive. And of course, then we have Pascal from Ambassadors of Bruges, one of the free tours that you can join here in the city. And I should mention that there are plenty more tours and experiences that you can try here in Bruges. That isn't a sneaky commercial. It's just mentioning that this is just a focused little sampling of uh, some of the guides we have here in Bruges. And I'm really glad that over 2020, especially with the video side of things that I haven't really talked about that I've been working on, uh, that I got to spend time with these people and work on a project together, even if it's unpaid. Doesn't matter. Now's the time that we all get together and see what we can do. Might take a little longer than you, than you expected, but hey, we all had smiles and fun on the way and uh, there's something coming out of it in future in 2021. So there's that. Oh, and of course, even though it was only 5% of last year's uh, business or a typical year as Photo Tour Bruges, actually did have a couple of photo tours only seven over the whole year, I think. I don't know if that's 5% of my year or not. Talk to the wife in accounting. But some locals came around as a small and distance and safe group. These actually happy, happen to be the uh, Young Socialists of Bruges, which are a rather respected party here. If you don't like communism, you're not really doing Belgium right. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's for my North American friends. Don't ask. Uh, yes, they came by for a photo tour and I'm so thankful for that, especially getting local faces long before 2020 on my photo tour has been uh, a real joy because I get to show people, even if they're just from the region or even the country itself, how I see Bruges as a, an expat living here 18 years, as well as the whole photo trip side of things. So that was nice. And actually, I'm not going to scroll through all the guest images. There's some very sweet people who drop by. But I guess I can just throw another one for a duo and keep things moving of this uh, lovely French family who came by and even braved the heavy, heavy rain that cleared only right at the end, of course, which caused this nice little fog on the lens. But yeah, they dropped by and they were lovely and I am so thankful for them and uh, that little smattering of photo tour guests over the year to uh, show I wasn't totally crazy or built a crappy business in 2020. Yeah. Felt right, felt good, felt awesome. And I even got to be a tourist in my own town. It's a, a long-term experience for me here, especially with the photo life, kind of getting to browse a lot of the backstage or, you know, front stage experiences of this city. But I did get a boat ride in and not your typical boat ride. This is on a city boat with Captain Leslie, who you can see there in an undeveloped photo way. He's one of the city workers who uh, go around cleaning our beautiful canals and doing the maintenance in one way or another. And I was lucky enough that I was able to join him for a boat ride. Thanks to Mikey over at Boats of Bruges for hooking that up. And also Alderman uh, Van Volkum, Miss Mercedes, for allowing it because that's city, uh, city responsibility. I got to go through, and even though I don't have that many photos to show you, at least right here, right now, I got to see the uh, Golden Hand Canal and a lot of back canals around that region all the way up to the Zand in a way that not even many locals get to see. So that was pretty special, and thank you, Captain Leslie, for the ride, as well as Alderman Van Volkum. Very nice work. And then we're moving on to another part of 2020 as we uh, recap things for Andy's photo life in this interesting year. The graffiti has always been around Bruges, but it's always been a controlled story as far as just designated zones where it's allowed, like at the skate park next to the Entrepot going out venue on the uh, St. Peter's side of town. Fortunately, this year we had the Bridges Street Festival, which is essentially a big old graffiti fest that was authorized for this fine city. It isn't in any of the super central sites like the Behenhof or on the Market Square because, you know, you got to be delicate here with the particular medieval and old school vibe we have uh, going on in the city. 
but they did open up more than a few locations for our local graffiti artists or a couple of visitors to uh, come by and add some color and life to this city. And I think it worked out really, really, really well. I mean, I am all for graffiti of the tasteful kind. I think it brightens up uh, urban environments, especially, you know, when it's not bright, sunny days like this. And Belgium has a few. So I think that's good for the uh, head and soul. And, you know, it just generally adds some color and vibe and stops things from getting stuck in time. So to see graffiti, even in the, you know, more urban or residential areas of the city compared to the uh, classic stuff you might know, I think that is absolutely superb and only does this city favors. The art scene here is uh, not as classical and dead as some might think or even joke about. They're probably just jealous because we live in a peaceful city, especially in 2020. So there's a few pieces from the Bridges Street Festival. Please make sure to Google that because the pieces are still around and the website will give you a map. You can also drop by Tourist Info for a Corona-proof, safe thing to check out in our beautiful city. And it only encourages the local artists to do more beautiful pieces like this and also nudges the city into authorizing more awesome stuff like this. So Bridges Street Festival, please make sure to check it out and... Uh, very, very worthy. And then skipping around over to the commercial work in the little way that I got to do over the year. Not a hotel interior, but the fine hair salon of hair tricks, where when Corona hasn't taken over, yours truly gets his quaff done. Dimmy needed some new shop photos, and he finally uh, decided to listen to that Canadian photographer about being a photographer and hired him. I wasn't even asking, but he's listened to me babble about photography and been kind enough to uh, give us a like every now and then on the photos. So I guess he likes my work. And without getting too boring or too extensive with the extensive photo shoot that we did, you can see me playing for the first time in a hair salon in the camera way, trying to get something that looks good in the commercial, but also real warm and genuine vibe. Part of the brief he gave me was that he wanted details so we got some tight shots like that and got some nice close-ups, I think, like that. And let's say like that. Not to mention like that of the final product for uh, Josine. Jolene, excuse me. And Jolene looked lovely, in it, uh, lovely as the model and, you know, victim for my camera for this photo shoot. Really sweet lady. And thank you to her and to Dimmy for uh, letting me do the, the hair salon thing for the first time as a commercial photographer. Another thing in the portfolio. All right, some art to change it up from there and move around with the faces. Quick check on the comments before we do, just so I can see if you have anything you want to add to the conversation. boop ba doop ba doo do 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 No? I'm down to zero viewers. I've scared you all off on... Uh, on this fine Christmas New Year pause. Fantastic. Do you think I'm going to stop talking? No, because this is another episode in the can and it means that uh, you can still catch it on the replay. I don't need questions. I barely even need viewers. I'm here. Oh, my wife is here. There you go. <laughs> hey, let's move on to some art. This is the Jan van Eyck exhibit that was uh, luckily showing in Bruges despite the lockdown, uh, thanks to the reopening. The museum's reopened with conditions, so while the lovely wife had to wear a mask, she was still able to go with me. And actually, I got to say, for a museum experience, when they're only letting in like 10 visitors every half hour, 45 minutes, so everybody has space and everybody gets to enjoy the nice quiet art without loads of crowds or anything else, it's pretty good. It's pretty all right. I'm not complaining and neither is, excuse me, neither is the wife. And we didn't make it the only exhibit we saw. We uh, didn't dwell too long in the museums this season because we've seen a lot of it all before. But the Memling Now exhibit where, uh, I'm sorry, I forget the artist's name, but they did contemporary takes on the Memling style of art. 
good old Hans Memling, who was a uh, figurehead in the art scene here in Bruges and in Belgium and of the Flemish masters in general. Again, art just finding new life and breathing. And I think, again, just sort of showing you that if you see the city as only classical art, I think you're, uh, you're really missing something. And yeah, they made a nice little show around it. It uh, worked out well. There were some projections that the wife could take a photo of and I could take a photo of her taking a photo. And just generally, we also got to enjoy some of the classical art that's there at the old St. Yann Museum. And uh, yeah, enjoy the best of a tough situation, I guess. And speaking of tough situations, uh, even though the costumes in Bruges aren't popping around this year, I was lucky enough as a friend of Costumes in Bruges to go to a private photo shoot. It was actually filming for, uh, I believe, Hans, who is doing a little video on something else that I wouldn't want to talk about without checking with him first. But we got to take some photos. That's uh, Johan over there taking the photo, and that is one of the beautiful performers who I never name because you shouldn't name them. There should be that mystery. And you can see I got my chance to take a few photos as we wandered around for the video side of things. Here, there, around, thinking about the hotels who have supported this initiative in January in past for at least one quick photo. And just getting the old, uh, you know, picture postcard spot just right as well as uh, seeing what we can play with with this whole Bridges Street Art Festival, huh? Yeah. And then we get to another section of photography that I think we'll get into a second. Let me just browse around and see what's going on. Oh, I have a couple of viewers back. Fantastic. Hello. All right, we're talking about Andy's year in review. And if you're just tuning in, well, you have missed a whole bunch because as you can see, things have gone down despite and partly because of the uh, lockdown that we've all been so, so treasuring over 2020. But we're at this point where we get sort of to uh, my main body of work next to the whole Bruges Landscapes uh, series release that I did. And, you know, just to get it quick, is there a definitive shot? Well, you saw some of it earlier, but boys and girls, I mean, just with the opportunity and the time on my hands and a need to, to keep busy with my photography over this time beyond what you're seeing here and there where I, you know, get a chance to run around. I, uh, I was working on my landscape series towards the, uh, the final, final result. I was actually still figuring it all out, but at the same time, just to, just to get some photos and with the opportunity with, you know, going to the events and, being in a small city where it's pretty easy to connect to people and get a chance to uh, ask for some press access. I got to do all sorts of city hall stuff. And I start with this photo because this is the main this is the main room in the back of city hall where they do a lot of the press conferences. So, you know, it's a good reference point to see how new tourism initiatives uh, are being announced. Winterhlood. The night, the night light festival or the light trail festival that's started last year, that being announced with all the ministers. Some of the refinements to Winterhlood as far as like crowd controls and having a barometer on the website you can look at. The mayor, chief of police, that kind of shoot. And various releases. This was a, a drugs policy update from the city of Bruges. There go Chief Van Nuffel. And just various things go down there from citizens being uh, given awards to the council meeting in one way or another. In this case, I was the only press or photography member there. So we just did a nice, let's get a photo of you three. And uh, yeah, I get to play around and just exercise my photography muscle in the photojournalist kind of way. This is obviously all available commercially as a freelance photographer, but more and more than anything else, I'm going for, for projects that I think are interesting or relate directly to the community here, especially in a, in a positive way, because I mean, this year in 2020, and it was the same with the landscape series, we, uh, we really got to focus on the positive, even if we're not ignoring the negative. And all these photos that you're seeing in one way or another, it's, a celebration of what we can do as a city. 
you know, a book that comes out that talks about 20 years of being a UNESCO World Heritage Site, but doesn't focus on the, the medieval architecture or the neo-Gothic stuff that isn't always even accurate to its time period. You do a book that shows the new stuff and I get a free copy. It's nice being press. You uh, look at World AIDS Day and how even though it's still an issue, obviously, so many years later, we celebrate it as a city and acknowledge, uh, acknowledge the progress that's been made. And in those situations, by this point, I can grab the mayor and say, do you have a minute? Let's take a photo of you by this ribbon of, of uh, flowers that all the citizens get to get to, uh, to, to commemorate the day and sort of warm up the winter ahead. You can actually see mine still in the background. But yeah, community events in one way or another, the mayor and some of the council getting, uh, well, the city really getting props for uh, boosting Too Good to Go food delivery services with the angle that it's uh, delivering food that would otherwise get wasted. Two Santa Claus dropping by. Two just count, you know, again, city events. This is rewarding workers who, uh, who volunteered during the initial lockdown towards like uh, social health programs. This is one of those book boxes that you can get set up in your community so people can leave a book, take a book. This is some really nice new park designs that have been announced for the um, Minnewater Park, which particularly for visitors to Bruges are, is, a, is a landing point. So it's a nice park, but it's actually going to get better. Even in this tough year, there's so much we can focus on in the positive way. And, you know, again, with these press events, it might look silly to see the mayor there every time or some of the same faces with the various uh, council members of the city or whatever. But that's how you get attention to these projects and how people can appreciate them and also know about them, whether they agree or disagree. They're at least aware of what's going on in their community. And frankly, as I think we've learned in 2020, that's a, a good thing to do. You should be aware of what's going on in your area. So yeah, little things. Showing up for shopping initiatives by the uh, Shopping Bruges Collective here towards promoting local shops during the Christmas season. People doing art and de deserving recognition. Shops reopening, great things coming soon with the shop association, the mayor, a couple of the aldermen's responsible for the economy or one thing or another that have to do with it. You know, there's lots of posing for the camera, but it's to bring focus on these things. And actually, the more I think of it, this one was, if you see in the corner, Coupe Weekend of Coupe Weekend, minus 10%, this was, one of the few authorized street markets that the uh, main shopping streets could do over this tough year. So yeah, brings attention to it. And uh, I think pretty interesting to cover. You know, I'm not really busy on photo tours and I've always loved photojournalism just as an interest and an inspiration far b before I was a photographer. So a chance to actually do it. And especially for this beautiful city that goes uh, far beyond the postcard life, it, it's very, very fulfilling and uh, reminded me how focusing on the positive can really yield results for myself as well as uh, those people around me. Oh, and this is a special little shoot. Let's go straight to the fisheye where we're up close. This is more than a few members of the city council, as well as uh, this fellow in the corner who make Dictator Dirk, which is our local political satire. And all I have to say about that is it is the best local political satire. And I was very, very happy to go to this event because, frankly, these politicians get the piss torn out of them and really, really made fun of. But we're such a tight community here at the end of the day, or they're smart enough to just go for this to uh, get some points, that we have them show up for the book launch and getting some publicity to... Uh, local initiatives and, and things like that. And actually to support a absolutely hilarious local strip. There you go. That's Dictator Dirk. It's available in Bruges. Supports hilarity and 
making fun of the politicians so much that they have to laugh. Come on. If you're in Bruges, you know it. Coupe it new. You know the business. And let's move on to the more seasonal stuff as we just run through my political chasings and life in Bruges moments captured as a photographer as the uh, year comes along and Christmas starts sort of gearing up properly. You can see this is Mayor de Fau, who we've seen in many photos, as well as, as well as a few representatives from the working folk here in Bruges, as well as, I believe, one of their supervisors, as well as, I believe, quite accurately, again, uh, Alderman or Alderwoman, Mercedes Van Volkham, probably one of the hardest working women in Bruges right now. She's in charge of the finances, so I do not envy her job especially. And yeah, you can see over the year, whether it was summer, whether it was winter, I got all these various politicians and folks around the city in one way or another to uh, smile and give me a minute of their time. It's pretty, uh, pretty wonderful, like I say, for the photojournalist side of me that's always sort of loved this stuff and actually wanted to do so much more with it. And uh, I think if I'm ordering it right, yeah, you get to see how uh, not every moment is so formal or uh, rehearsed for the camera. <laughs> I mean, when the mayor grabs some little windmills at the windmill and starts doing that, you have to fire off the camera. <laughs> and uh, actually, the photojournalist part of me really, really loves how you get a formal moment and then you get the informal moment. And then you look around for those other informal moments. Nothing posed, nothing, nothing, nothing for the, for the camera in the intentional way, but to me, seeing something and catching what I can with intention. It's interesting and they're good sports about it. They're also characters in, I think, interesting and positive ways. So it's certainly fun to uh, catalog that life. Even, you know, press moments where you can catch the press at that moment. That's, I'm finding really fascinating as a photographer. And even a little chit chat that, uh, again, isn't post up for the camera, I think, really tells the story of humanity and, uh, you know, just the life in this city that I've always uh, found fascinating from postcards and otherwise. And another little one from the Dictator Dirk II launch. And chitty chat and, you know, again, real, genuine human life. Sometimes you get the mayor fooling around with a couple of windmills. Sometimes you get a moment where a shop owner is explaining to uh, to the alderman alderman in in work uh, in uh, oh, sorry Pablo the uh, you know one of the one of the the business associated aldermen the mayor and the head of the uh, shopping Bruges group being able to hear from shop owners themselves what's going on. They're not just there for the photo shoot; they're also there to help support and hopefully you know, raise understanding for the awareness, uh, the awareness, including themselves. Yeah, fun stuff, interesting ways to play. I mean, the other thing also, when you get to the politics, as far as me taking photos of people in Bruges this year, uh, let's just be honest. I mean, with all the restrictions and everything, it's not exactly the time to go up to too many strangers and say, hey, can I stand in your general area for about... 20 minutes, half an hour, and take some photos. Sometimes even get close to right on that line of 1.5 meters, sometimes with the camera and the back screen reaching in. You got to be careful where you're doing that. So, uh, you know, with the politicians and everything, having to at least, you know, do their best on regulations themselves, as well as me having a chance to uh, make contact there and just, you know, get on the press list and, uh, and see what I could do. Felt pretty good to explore. And I got to say also, just as I uh, a pause and check for comments and all that stuff, not we're all good. Yeah, it um, it just felt uh, really good as a community member here in Bruges, in my adopted home, to be able to get into understanding some of these issues, getting to sit there after I get my photos and just sort of soak it all in. And actually, at the end of the day, working on my Flemish a little bit more was a, a nice little side benefit from that. Either talking it just a little bit towards direction, towards chit-chat with people, or listening to these issues. Uh, it, it is good for me flams, eh? Yo! <laughs> Yo! 
And moving on from there, and also showing you that I wasn't just lost in City Hall. I mean, uh, like I said, a little bit, got to be a little bit careful with everything in 2020 as far as access and uh, bothering people. But there were a few people in my community I was, I was able to catch, or a few moments that I really wanted to make it out there for. Um, this isn't exactly the best representation of it till you know the context, but again, for trying to get something to show the story of my community and uh, again, spread awareness in some way. A demonstration for the catering businesses, the cafes who had to close over winter and were being told they had to close again. That was a press event, as you can tell, with all the photographers and people in the background. But, you know, this was a, a little moment that I was able to slip into and, uh, and catch a bit. And Walter, for one of the most recent events, this just finished on uh, Christmas Day successfully for him. He did a hunger strike to raise awareness to climate change and commitments that have been made both nationally, statewide, and locally towards uh, reducing carbon footprints and doing a better job of the ecology. All that has to be, you know, kept in awareness and on the side of the people who uh, agree to this stuff actually happen. And he feels it isn't happening on a schedule that's that's actually going to happen, so... He did a hunger strike this year, 14 days, just liquids. And even then, water, tea, not anything more than salt. 14 days of sitting at City Hall. I had to at least get there for day one, and I passed him at least every second day as, uh, you know, my limited trips to town allowed. And it's uh, the sort of thing that I applaud and support and think that we all have to uh, keep in mind, you know, the educated, peaceful discourse and, you know, awareness raising that we have to do towards causes that actually matter and aren't always uh, getting done as they should be. It's good to see a little bit of press there too. I mean, that's essentially at the end of the day what these actions can do is uh, raise awareness, not just to people passing by and hopefully to some politicians, but also to the press so they can spread the message a little bit wider. It's good stuff and it's important stuff. And yeah, good to see uh, when the press shows up. All right. Another thing I've tried to support, although it's been, again, very limited just by the situation here in 2020, is local businesses. It's something I'm going to get to a little more aggressively in 2021, as I think vaccines and reopenings and, you know, movement and distance become less of an issue. Uh, overcoming times, but the Duvalorium, that nice cafe you might have dropped by on the Market Square by the Historium uh, experience. Well, they were selling Duval uh, nice and cheap so that they could get rid of it before it expired and the tax year ended. And uh, I caught sight of one of those ads on Too Good To Go, and I was more than happy to pass by and grab this photo that ended up being on Instagram to raise awareness that cheap beer is afoot and you can support local businesses by picking it up. And also I thought of Isabel over at Karma Market, the zero waste shop where you can go in with a container and she will fill it so that you can help out the ecology as well as get some fine, fine food. This is just a little photo where uh, I had passed by and um, she had just received this drawing from one of the uh, community kids. So I wanted to catch that moment and share it with you. And then we move on to a little bit of a, oh, that shouldn't have been there. That's the uh, story of the cafes closed and some of the less awesome times of the year, which I guess to relate to the narrative I'm talking about is again, just, you know, a chance to not get stuck in these photos that tell a story of tough times, empty cafes in the middle of summer and business closing down. It's of joy and happiness and community. You take your pick. You can document both, but see where you lean towards. Yeah, things to think about. All right, we're getting at a certain point where I've just got to check in what I've been photographing. Yep, and also I'm gonna hop over to Facebook. A couple people on the air, but it's overall quiet. I thought it might be a risk broadcasting in this uh, holiday weekend. But hey, here we are, and you can always catch this on the replay. So 
Let's go to this photo of a cute little cat that lives by the Honing Museum. There he is. Aw. There's positive stuff for 2020. Oh, and uh, speaking of City Hall and documenting life that goes on and things happening, I believe we sort of ran back to Bruges Landscapes Unlocked for Light, a story of space, silence, and simplicity. That book came out, well, the, the series came out November 1st, and the book finally got delivered uh, November 12th. But November 11th, I got to go to, what am I saying November? December. December 11th? December 10th. Uh, right after birthday? December 10th, I got mm -hmm. to go to City Hall mm -hmm. and present the book to the mayor. Sorry about that confusion on dates. It's all for the record. Yes, I was lucky enough that since I had the mayor in the finished edition of Bruges Landscapes Unlocked for Light, that he said, would you like to have a press moment to present it to the city? I was able to say yes. And there is, is as we met on the doors of City Hall that fine morning with my lovely wife, going inside back into that press room of City Hall, you can see me sitting at the big desk with the mayor and our cultural minister, our cultural alderman, Nico Blontrock. Very, very lovely that I got to do a little press moment to, uh, you know, present the book to the city archive, as well as some prints uh, that I wanted to present to the city archive towards rec records of this unique year in our history. And also, you know, um, even though I don't have the websites handy, because I'm just going to keep it to photos this week, uh, also get the word out for some of the projects going on through the city to commemorate lockdown. You know, Nico's there as the cultural minister, not a cultural alderman, not only because it has to do with culture, but because the cultural, uh, <clears throat> the cultural deanst, the various offices there are doing a competition where if you win by submitting a photo of lockdown that you took, it will get printed up and, uh, displayed over the city in a real nice spot. And on the city archive side of things, they're asking people to bring photos, drawings, anything that happened over lockdown in a creative way that sort of records the moment towards presenting that to the city archive towards an eventual presentation or just flat out archiving, because that's what they're there for. Uh, you know, history matters and especially special moments like this. We should have the cultural archive of what's going on, not just empty streets. So I was proud to uh, have my little moment in the sun and shine that sunbeam left and right as possible. You can see I also got a little bit of press again, which was rather nice. That actually didn't go to press, but I am thankful that Michelle dropped by for a photo nonetheless. You know, we skipped over to the Rosen Hood Gay. I got to show a photo of the books, uh, photos taken on the Rosen Hood Gay, and I got my minute in the sun. And I also got to meet Natalie, who by the video camera is reporter three that day for a nice little video feature I got on way TV focus, which is our national news network. That was nice. And my wife was very proud of me. She was beaming with sunshine the entire time. She's even in the background of that photo. Look at that out of focus and hidden with the mask and some buka. Alrighty, what else to say? I guess it's all firmly in the territory of Bruges Landscapes Unlocked for Light and some of the backstage photos of the wife being kind enough to wrap up the books and do all the various bits and pieces that are involved that definitely go better with a woman's touch in this case. I'm good at the photos, but not so good at the wrapping and the fine handwriting and the paperwork that has to go out, especially on you international book supporters. So I am grateful to that lady for taking care of this. And there's a little peek backstage at what happened there. And I'm also thankful for some of the people I got to drop off the book to in person. Look, there's John from the Waffle Van perusing his copy of Bruges Landscapes Unlocked for Light, a limited edition, no less. So he has one of a hundred. There's Isabel from Karma Market looking away from her copy of Rouge Landscapes, Unlocked for Light. There's Martin hiding behind his newspaper as I met him one dark evening on the market square with social distancing and mask after the shot so that he could pick up his two copies of Bruges Landscapes, Unlocked for Light. 
Thanks, Martin, and everyone else. It's just a few of them. Felt really good. And from there, I don't know what else to tell you about the year of 2020. Do we even have listeners? Oh, we have one or two. <laughs> Woohoo! It's probably my wife. But you can see, boys and girls, at least on the replay, how this year pretty much wraps up around this time of Christmas joy. You know, this is uh, the <laughs> rough weather, not in these shots, but at this time of year. However, before it all descended, I did, of course, get a couple of Christmassy photos with the Christmassy stuff that we did set up here in Bruges. Unfortunately, with the conditions of 2020 and restrictions, we weren't able to have our huge um, Christmas market on the market. So no stalls, no ice rink, no super fun good times on that side of things. But we did get a tree village in the Christmas tree way. So I'm pretty grateful because you can see uh, I got a couple shots out of that. And also not to be ignored and has been mentioned as well as focused on on previous episodes of Andy's photo show. We have the Winter Glood Festival, which is the Winter Glow Festival. This is the opening night and, of course, me getting my shot with the politicians in one way or another. But for a more definitive take on what the Winter Glow Festival looks like, now in its second edition, and uh, I'm personally kind of glad they did it, even though, obviously, it, it cost a, a good amount of cash in a critical time. The city gets lit up in creative light ways, like here, the Church of Our Lady, or Onzeliva Fraukirk, being bathed in light and a moving, rotating show that uh, you'll have to st stay tuned for to see more photos of. That also, and taken at a high ISO that looks even more terrible in the preview way, but you can see the old gunpowder tower by the Lake of Love has been uh, projected with a bunch of tags and stickers and whatnot in the virtual way. Also, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the Hothuis Museum. You don't really see it in this shot, but it did a light show and some music that was pretty captivating. And uh, in the bigger picture, excuse the pun, I got a nice photo, I think, of the Hothuis. And then we can scroll through to some of the other situations and moments going on with Winter Glood and how I kept busy with the camera. You know, these moving lamps and lights, these projections going on in buildings, very, very fun for photography. So again, mixed feelings with the cost involved in a very, very difficult year. Uh, but I was, I got to say, it's so good to see something with light and positive joy uh, in these dark days on a normal year. And especially in 2020, seeing the winter glow, it's, uh, it's hard to fault it. So yeah, fun. Fun and interesting, especially with the whole, the whole, like I said, art scene here. Not just stuck in time with the, uh, the Flemish masters, but if anything, celebrating the old and the new on what's possible there. Very, very good. Very, very nice and very, very winter glowy, as is my beautiful wife that you're seeing who joined me on at least opening night, as well as a couple wanders around the city uh, that were very, very nice, like I've talked about, but haven't always shown photos for, like this beautiful foggy morning. Yeah, having the dog by the side is also nice, whether it's out there on walks for him, playing for the ball, waiting for the ball so we can get the shot, or just being our Christmas model in one way or another. I mean, it was a uh, busy year, but overall, I have to say, like many of you, next to uh, trying to keep as busy as possible on the photo front in one way or another, I was certainly, certainly uh, pretty damn happy to have this lovely lady and this cool dog as my bubble family for that period. And pretty much every period, because uh, we're one of those couples who are only so social. 2020 was not too much of a shock to the system for us because uh, we hang out at home with each other and that dog and cats in the past and very, very selected friends. But we actually do miss them after this uh, extended break apart and social distancing. A few of you have had kids. A few of you are just valued friends. And, uh, you know, I was looking forward to seeing you in one way or another. 
until all this went down. That even includes a friend from back in Canada who was finally going to make it over to Bruges after I visited there last year, but no travel for Saul this year. So yeah, it'll all be next year, but it is at least heartening personally to know that I have this uh, warm and cozy bubble both with my family and in this beautiful city, as well as uh, my community and knowing that some of you have uh, a nice cozy bubble, if not more than a few of you. And if you don't feel like you have a cozy bubble, well, do your best to remember where there is cozy bubble, even if you are a bubble of one. You know, try and keep positive and uh, keep on the light side of things. You know, look at my dog, if nothing else. That's got to cheer you up in one way or another. And if nothing else, over this tough year of 2020, I hope you are doing what me, the wife, and uh, more than a few of my friends have done, especially if work has been limited through tourism or whatever. And that's just catch some sleep, take some rest, and uh, oh, go back to zero as far as rebooting everything. 2021, I think, is going to be a reboot in many ways, both economically, socially, and otherwise. So, you know, take the opportunity to roll with that and reboot yourself in one way or another towards uh, positive growth and change. <clears throat> I'm going to be doing that, but first I need a sip of water. Whew, full hour. Yes, boys and girls. Uh, here, why don't we swap back to main camera because we're towards the end of the show. There we go. There's me. There's me all sitting back and laid back. Yeah, boys and girls, if you are uh, relaxing this year, it is no bad thing in my opinion. And if you can reboot yourself a little bit through that relaxation in one way or another, whether it's spending time with family, whether it's spending time on your own, just figuring out yourself and getting to a better place in one way or another, please, I endorse this kind of behavior because I've done my fair share of it over the over the years and uh, it's done me a lot of good and getting some of that in a little bit extra over 2020 has been uh, a real, real gift and treat. And, you know, just so you see the perspective of all things and also that I don't always have the gifted life and freebies all the way. I mean, certainly uh, having a business in tourism means that it wasn't all joy and roses and puppies and unicorns for uh, 2020, despite the obvious here for Andy. But also that uh, I, I just, I'm so tired already at the beginning of the year because we haven't had a real proper holiday, just the, me and the wife, whether it's with the dog or otherwise, for a good five years. And I was going to actually end up talking about that a lot this year by looking back to my five-year-ago holiday to Croatia, but... Aside from a week of me traveling solo to Canada, there and back for a family visit for my dad's 75th, and luckily to see them all before this COVID crap went down, uh, I used 2020 and that whole rest and sleep and relaxation thing I'm talking about towards just uh, doing that and having a bit of a cruisy year after all the worry was said and done with. You know? It's uh, what you make it in life, and... To relax has been really, really nice to get a few extra sleep in days, to do some of the photography uh, that really makes me excited and happy and just feeling fresh as I keep going down this process. And at the end of the day, Bruges is only so big, so the worry to run out of things is starting to crawl in a little bit, but then gets kicked away by just opening my eyes and making use of the positive and opportunity. So, uh, you know, use me as a case example of if I can do it, you can too, because uh, it, everything's possible and it is what you make it. And even if everything you didn't think was directly possible was possible, there's always a way somehow. So make the best out of it. Be a positive and, you know, just contributing force to everything instead of a poo-poo face or a caca head because frankly you know life is short as we've seen in this year and uh good times can be short so let's just all stay positive stay good and make the most out of it and grow and change into uh the best version of ourselves we can to sort of wrap things up and put a bow on it 
I will say at the end of this show and with just one more sip of water before we sign off in a tidy way. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> Got to limit these things to an hour sometimes, but we're not because it's New Year. What the hell? And I'm at the end of the show where I'm just going to let you know what's happening for future shows, which is simply that it's going to continue, but not quite business as usual. There's going to be some uh, changes going on in the format of the show and uh, just in its evolution and growth now that we've done 13 episodes here in 2020 and sort of gotten the ball rolling and seeing what's worked and what hasn't. Uh, for that, I'm actually just also going to take a couple weeks off. So the beginning of January will be quiet as far as Andy's photo show. We've done 13 episodes and with the new year and new changes ahead, both for the show and myself in a personal way, I'm just going to take two weeks off air, uh, to relax and breathe fully and focus on those things as well as like I talked about just sleeping in with Mrs. Andy and the dog a little bit. So enjoy two weeks of peace and quiet from my nattering voice on photography and otherwise here in this beautiful city of Bruges. But be sure to know that we are going to come back at least that third week on a Sunday at 8 p.m. Central European time here from the beautiful city of Bruges. It's still happening. It's still going. I'm not going to have photo tours for a while, so I do have the time on my hands. And even though I uh, have many, many exciting plans for the photography uh, next year, I want to keep this up and keep this going because I think it adds a nice level towards uh, not only me uh, working my creative process as a photographer, but like I've been for the last eight years as Photo Tour Bruges, helping you with your photography. You tiny little audience that I love so much for tuning in and... Uh, contributing whenever you feel in it. I'm really enjoying this and there's going to be more of it. So stay tuned, but uh, go away for a couple of weeks because we're closed. Me and Mrs. Andy are enjoying just our time as well as some backstage prep. And having said that and looked over at Mrs. Andy and her looking happy that I am saying it is break time soon, I guess it is time to wrap up the show for 2020 here on Andy's Photo Show. I hope you've enjoyed this and please make sure to tell your friends by liking, subscribing, sharing, doing all that good stuff that gets the word around for Andy's photo show and Andy's photo work in one way or another. My name is Andy McSweeney of Andy McSweeney Photography. Please feel free to check out my work at andymcsweeney.com and same goes for the whole photo tour Bruges life as photo tour Bruges, the daily walking tour in Bruges since 2012. Rocking it on and still going strong even in shutdown. You can check it all out over at www.phototourbruges.com as well as also find copies and the full project series Bruges Landscapes Unlocked for Life, Unlocked for Light. I almost said it right. Damn. One, at least once an episode. Anywho, those are my little falters and foibles and all that. See you in 2021, everybody. Have a good one. And of course, make sure to put me down at this point. Pick up your camera, or at least make plans for it. Get out there and get shooting. See ya. Happy Christmas. Happy New Year. Rock it till next year and beyond. <laughs>